website open and running, let's take a look at how adding content in the WordPress dashboard affects what it looks like on the front end or on the live website. So with the dashboard open, let's just take a look at a few of the different places we have content. One is posts. Posts are designed like a blog, designed to be displayed in reverse chronological order. And this first post is a default post from WordPress. If we look at it, it's got a content area and a title. And if we go back to the settings in the dashboard, I just want to show you under how in settings and reading, we have the website set so that the home page displays the latest posts. Now, if we go back to pages, WordPress also comes with a sample page. And if I click on the title of that page, pages are different. They don't have categories and tags associated with them like posts do, and they're designed to be more like static pages of a website. And so if we wanted the home page of the website to display not the latest blog posts, but to display a particular static page like this sample page, we would do that in two different places. One is under settings and reading. You can see that if I click a static page and then I choose one of my pages for the home page. And if I just click save changes right there, go back to the website itself and refresh, You'll see that as I scroll down, now I have the contents of that sample page as the home page instead of the latest blog posts. As I mentioned, there's one more place that you can edit what the actual website displays, and that's in the customizer. That's under appearance, customize in the WordPress dashboard. And if you go there, it actually shows you a live representation of what the website could look like as you make changes over here in these items. So if we look at home page settings, that's the same exact information as we have under settings and reading settings. So you can see it's reflected my change. I have a static page and it's called home. Now that's a little bit different, isn't it? And if you look, this is a different layout than we had on the live site right here. I've defined the sample page as the home page. But over here under the home page settings in the customizer, a default layout for this 2017 theme is that we can have a home page that displays a bunch of different content with static images in the background. Now I'm scrolling down a home page section, an about page, and a, a section of blog posts. And you can see that this has a lot of sample content that wasn't there to begin with. Now, if I click under home page and I click sample page, that looks more like the website looks right now. That's the home page. And then the posts page is a page called blog. Now, let's leave it as the customizer is set up and click the publish button. And now let's go back to the website and refresh that page. You can see that the 2017 theme allows you to use these home page sections, which have these big wide hero images uh, and some sections using page content inside of the website. And this is a way that themes, not just 2017, but all themes have an opportunity to give you kind of a starting point for your website. So let's go back into the WordPress dashboard because I've published under home page settings this static page and chose home and blog. Now if I just click the X button on the left and I go under page and all pages, you can see that the theme has added some default content. It defines our front page, which is the home page, as the one called home. And that sample content just says welcome to your site, etc. Let me go back to all pages. Now, the blog page doesn't have any content at all. It tells you that, oh, you're currently editing the page that shows your latest posts. Okay, so here's the URL or the permalink for that part of the website. It's the domain name slash blog. If I right click that and click open in a new tab, I could take a look at what that would look like. It has part of the homepage image at the top with the site title 
it has some navigation, and then this is the reverse order posts, of course we only have one, in a list. And so that would be your blog page. Let's go back to the practice site, and since we've made that change in the customizer, you can also see that the theme has given us a sample navigation menu that wasn't there before. One of the great things about this theme is how it sets up this sample content, but also how it has this nice scrolling home page. This right hand button uh, with a little arrow in the navigation menu, which starts at the bottom of the page, that if you click it, it brings you up to the next section. And then the navigation stuck, sticks to the top of the page and all the content goes under it. So no matter where you are in the website, you can go back and click one of these navigation items. Now I clicked contact and there's some sample page content on a particular page called contact. This gives you a nice starting point so that you can go ahead and start editing those existing pages in the pages section of the WordPress dashboard and begin getting your theme and the look and feel of your website together. You can stop the video now and start playing with your own site and figuring out how things work, including pages, post content, and the menu items. Now, I told you that the menu was already created from the sample content in this theme. And if you want to edit the menu, you can do that under Appearance, Menus, as well as in the Customizer right here under Menus. Now the top menu is the one that was created for us and you can play with changing that around a little bit on your own. Come on back here and we'll look at how the local development environment works with WordPress in the next section. Now let's take a look at how the local by flywheel local development environment uses the WordPress files and a MySQL database to make WordPress into an effective content management system. First, the WordPress files, or the WordPress core files, as they're sometimes referred to. These are the PHP files that make up WordPress and let it work in the browser to connect to the database. So if I go up to my browser, I've navigated here to WordPress.org, the website for the open source WordPress software that we're using. And you can see that there's a download WordPress button at the top right. And if you open that page, you'll see the version of WordPress, which is the latest stable release, and the ability to click on that to download the zip file. Now, if you remember, when we were in Local by Flywheel, when we hit the plus button and added a new site, one of the messages we got across the bottom was downloading WordPress. Well, Flywheel was downloading it from this very server on our behalf. It always gets the latest version of WordPress. And we don't have to then download these files because Local by Flywheel does that for us. Now, on your own computer, if you look at Local by Flywheel, remember when we were setting it up, we left the files in the default location. So right now, let's navigate on our computer to where those files are located for our practice site. If you remember, mine was called Practice Site 1. And now, whether you're on Windows or on a Mac, it'll be slightly different. On a Mac, you can use the Finder. But in Windows, I'll be using the File Explorer. Whether you're on Windows or a Mac, the files are located in a similar location. I'm using File Explorer in Windows to navigate to the main hard drive on my computer. And then under Users, and then my own username, I go down to a folder called Local Sites. That was created by Local by Flywheel, and you can see the various folders associated with my local websites. Here's Practice Site 1, and then there's a folder called App for Application, and then the Public folder is where the actual WordPress core files are located. These are all the core files that you would download if you went to WordPress.org and downloaded the file structure itself. And we're going to be installing WordPress manually at a later time in the course. But if I go back to the File Explorer and look at these, this set of 19 or 20 files, there's one particular one that we use to connect WordPress itself 
to the database. Now, from WordPress.org, the default comes with a file called wpconfig-sample, and if you do install WordPress manually, you're, you're meant to rename or copy this file and rename it wp-config.php. You can see that it's showing in my Windows or File Explorer that it's a PHP file. And so that file is already configured to connect to the database in local by flywheel. We'll be looking at the wp-config file in pretty good detail later on. But that's where the files are located. And now let's take a look back into local by flywheel and look at where the database is located. Local by flywheel comes with a database utility called adminner and it will install it the first time you click adminner but if you connect the adminner software it opens up a database browser and editor in your browser whether it's Firefox or Chrome or Safari on the Mac uh, if you look you can see that it's opened up the database associated with my website and so what I have here are the different tables inside of the database. And if I look at, say, let's look at the users table. You know, if I click that table heading and then I go up and I, I hit the select data button, you can see that there is one user created in WordPress and there's my username. And of course, my password it is hashed or it's encrypted so that it works properly with the WordPress file structure. And there's one more table that I'd like to show you with some of the data that is in the database in WordPress and that's the WP options table. If I select that table and then click select data you can see that there's there's actually quite a bit of data in the WP options table and uh, each of these rows is something that's defined by WordPress but as you can see it's not stored inside of the actual file structure in WordPress it's stored separately in the database and that's what makes WordPress a content management system with a database holding all of the content and all of the options none of the pages you create in WordPress while you're creating websites are stored as new pages in the files they're stored in the database and then WordPress puts it together as a website directly from the server to the user's browser. And so in WP options, the first two rows are called the site URL and the home rows. You can see that's where the URL is or the web address is for your website. So that's a small tour of the database and the file structure in WordPress. Let me show you just one more thing. I'm going to go back to the File Explorer in Windows and show you in one of the folders, the WP Content folder, this is where you would store any themes that you have installed in WordPress. And there's three currently that come as default themes, 2016, 2017, and 2015. I go back, there's also the Plugins folder. There's no plugins installed right now as a default plugin in my installation. And then the uploads folder. Now I have the year and the month, but uh, the only media or, or images that I have in that uploads folder are, have been added by default from the theme itself. And so I showed you that to show you that inside of the WordPress file structure, the only thing that's going to change in this file structure is when you upload themes or plugins or media content into the media library and those are in the WP content folder. All these other files never change and shouldn't change in terms of your WordPress installation. We'll get into more detail about playing with our WordPress site and how to add content and change content just using the WordPress dashboard but for now, that gives you an idea of where the files are stored and how you manage the database using this particular local development environment, Local by Flywheel. In this lesson, we took a tour of how WordPress works as a content management system and also how to access the underlying file structure and the database using Local by Flywheel. 
In the next video, I'll show you how I would install WordPress manually using Local by Flywheel.